Happy holidays, and welcome to my 2017 holiday real-time strategy stocking stuffer top five list. We are going to take a look at five RTS games that, well, they may have slipped under your radar. They may be a little older. They may be a little squirrely to get work right, but they are some awesome real-time strategy games sure to bring a smile to any RTS fan's face when found in a stocking or under a tree. Let's get started. Number five, Warlords Battlecry 3. What is there to say about Warlords Battlecry 3? Well, quite a bit, actually. It's an older title. This one I would recommend getting on good old games as opposed to Steam, as GOG tends to keep things a little better updated make sure that they run on modern systems a little bit more reliably. And this is a sprite-based title, not 3D, as some of the other ones are in this list. And it is unique in that you pick your character and you pick your race separately. So you, as a player, have a representative general. That general can be picked from any race, and there is a very long list of races in the game and that general also has a class from archmage to necromancer to death knight you can be almost anything so your character levels per map it also is capable of having a retinue basically units that travel from map to map scenario to scenario if you're thinking that could make a general very powerful it absolutely does however Strategy also comes into it, so just because someone has an ultra-powerful hero doesn't necessarily mean they'll wipe you off the map, but it probably will help. The imagination in the game is amazing. The minotaurs, for example, heal by picking up the ambient wildlife on the map and eating them. They can also have little sheep pens where they can grow sheep to use for healing food. The undead spawn from graveyards, first as a skeleton, then you can upgrade a skeleton to either a wraith, I believe, or white. So one is a ghost, one is essentially a physical body. One goes in the direction of more and more ghostly, the other one goes in mostly combat, although it can evolve into a lich. There is just so much depth to this game. It doesn't have variety in heights, it doesn't have a high ground advantage or anything like that, but there is so much to do. There are quests on the maps, even randomly generated maps. So Warlords Battlecry 3 makes the list for being an incredibly unique game and a game with an immense amount of replay value. Coming in at number four is Rise of Nations, and Rise of Nations is probably one of the more traditional real-time strategy games. It has an absolutely outstanding tutorial section. If you wanted to learn to play a real-time strategy game, you could do much worse than Rise of Nations. That being said, if you are an experienced player, it also has some other features there to help you get better at being a real-time strategy game player, including aging challenges, rush challenges, there's even a mode called Whack a General, which is essentially, well, designed to help you get better at clicking on things and selecting things. And it's a bit challenging. It starts off a bit slow, but it starts to move faster and faster and faster. Once you get into the meat of the real game though, the real real-time strategy game within Rise of Nations, you're looking at a fairly traditional RTS. However, there are some unique features to Rise of Nations, including the ability to research much as you would in a 4X game like Civilization. So when you're aging, you're also leveling up commerce and science and warfare and civics and these are allowing you to advance in ages and even advance into more high-tech 
weapons and political systems and theology. It is a vast, smooth game with a varied number of units, and it's easy to pick up and probably a bit difficult to master, really. I think overall a great choice for a stocking stuffer or present. Coming in at number three is Homeworld Remastered. This is available on both Steam and good old games, GOG.com, and it is... Well, it is a remaster of the original Homeworld done by Gearbox. However, the original Homeworld and Homeworld 2 are a part of the package. It is a little more expensive when not on sale. Well, a lot more expensive when not on sale than some of the other titles so far. However, it has probably one of the best campaigns in real-time strategy. If you want a story in real-time strategy, Homeworld, the original and the first Homeworld and Homeworld Remastered, have that story. And it's pretty, pretty amazing, I have to say. One of the only real-time strategy games that's ever brought tears to my eyes. Actually, the only real-time strategy game that's ever brought tears to my eyes. It is set in space. It has not only your X and Y axis, but you know what? It also has a Z axis. If you ever loved that part in Star Trek Wrath of Khan where the Enterprise comes up out of the clouds, well, you can do that in Homeworld. It is an amazing game. It is a beautiful game, and it is truly a classic of the real-time strategy genre. At number two, we have Command and Conquer Generals, a game of humor, a game that mocks each side equally, and for that, I absolutely love it. It is an RTS with humor, and, well, that sort of helps with the downside, that being that it's only available on EA's Origin and part of a package deal. Now, the good part of the package deal is that you can get all of the Command & Conquer titles at once. The bad part of the package deal is that, well, it's on Origin. So, why do I love Generals? Oh, let me count the ways. Well, no, we won't count them, but we will talk about them just a bit. General, you are no match for me. I own the skies. Watch the skies, General. We're gonna put on an air show. Let's give him an airship. Want to see it again? <laughs> yeah. So, Command and Conquer Generals and its, well, expansion pack, Zero Hour, has a bit more personality than everything we've run into so far. While Homeworld is the more serious of all of the stories, I think Command and Conquer Generals is quite the bit less. That doesn't make it not a wonderful real-time strategy game. It is amazing. It has some incredibly deep options and it is also quite asymmetrical. So there are two sides that are similar, the Chinese and the Americans. However, the GLA, they are quite a bit different. The Chinese and the US both have aircraft the GLA don't, unless they capture them or capture units to build them, and you can do that in Command and Conquer Generals. You can capture builders, you can capture buildings, you have covert units that can steal money, that can destroy buildings. It is a game of deceptive simplicity and incredible, incredible depth. The campaigns are fun. They are probably the campaigns I've played the most in real-time strategy games. Every year or two I go back to it because I absolutely adore it. It is also incredibly fun to play multiplayer and incredibly challenging to play multiplayer. If you want to see more on that, I would recommend a channel called General's Gentlemen, and I'll try and leave a card right here so that you can check out their channel if you so desire. Otherwise, as I said, Command and Conquer Generals is a brilliant option for a stocking stuffer or present, and you know what? The rest of those Command and Conquer games make a nice little bonus to boot. And number one, Cossacks and Cossacks 3. Well, 
They're basically, to some degree, the same game. Cossacks is a game that came out originally, I think, in 1998 or 99, and you can get both Cossacks and Cossacks 3 on either Steam or GOG. GOG has the Cossacks anthology for the first game. This, what we're looking at right now, is the first Cossacks. And the anthology is probably easier to pick up on GOG. And depending on sales, maybe cheaper. The Cossacks 3, which we'll take a look at later, is a modern game that released last year in 2016 but it is essentially a remake of Cossacks. Now, Cossacks, what we're looking at here, is a 2D game. These are sprites. It is capable of putting a phenomenal number of units on the field, and when I say phenomenal, I mean in the thousands. And it also has some other features like peacetime, which you can set, say, in a multiplayer game, you can set peacetime for 20 minutes, which would give each side 20 minutes to build up their city, build their defenses, build their armies, and then unleash war upon each other. There are some very civilized and very forward-thinking abilities in Cossacks, the original Cossacks. The ability to right-click and drag and change your troop facing, that's from Cossacks. And Cossacks has some great animations, even in the older version. You can watch troops fire, stop, reload their rifle with their ball and powder and rod, and then continue on. It is very fast as a game on the older version. It's a bit slower in the newer version. I imagine it's probably a bit easier to work out in multiplayer in the newer version. And it is a game that I think is probably overlooked depending on where you are. If you are in the western portion of the world, especially, say, the United States, Canada, you probably haven't even heard of Cossacks. If you are from Europe and Eastern Europe, you've probably had a little bit more exposure to it. Either way, it is a brilliant game. It is much like Total War if you took out the strategy, the turn-based overworld, and didn't have to wait so long on your troops. In Cossacks, things move pretty quickly. There are really no aerial units except for a balloon that you can use for recon, but there are naval units, and they are quite powerful. In Cossacks, you have to keep an eye on your economy. You have mines, but they're not just fire and forget mines. You have to place civilians in the mine, citizens to mine, and all your units get paid. So if you run out of gold and your units stop getting paid, they might turn rebel and decide to take out their frustrations on your city or your infrastructure. There are some truly advanced concepts in Cossacks, and it is an absolutely brilliant real-time strategy game. And it is for that reason that it is here at the number one slot. If I had to say one thing that was a problem with Cossacks, it's that the upgrade research structure is a bit arcane. You need to look for the options yourself, and you need to know what they are. No one's really going to show you how to do that, unless you go looking for tutorials on YouTube. All of that being said, it is still my number one game in Cossacks the Original and Cossacks 3, and I would say check it out if you want to give someone on your list a very special real-time strategy experience. And this has been Checkers with my 2017 Top 5 RTS picks for stocking stuffers and presents this holiday season. I hope you found the video informative and maybe just a little entertaining. I would like to invite you to subscribe, like, and share if you so desire, and to ask you, above all, to please take care.